to Allah, we seek refuge in him from our errors, our mistakes, from our bad deeds. وَشَهَدُوا أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَعَهْدَهُ لَا شَرِكَ لَهُ وَشَهَدُوا أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, that he is one and alone. I associate nothing in worship with Allah. I give open testimony indeed Prophet Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad and Abi wa ala Ali wa sahbi ajma'in. May the greetings and the peace of Allah be upon the most excellent messenger, upon his descendants, upon his family, upon his companions, upon the righteous believers all. Ameen. I'm about. And what follows is a noble salute to the messenger of God. I'd like to begin with a reading from the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَكُلِّ حَمْدِ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّقِذُ لَمْ يَتَّقِذُ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُوكِ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مِنْ لَذُلُّ مِنْ لَذِلُّ مَنْ كَبِرْهُ تَقْبِرًا With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, Allah says to us, say, praise be to Allah, who begets no son and has no partner in his dominion, nor is there any to protect him from humiliation. Yes, magnify him for his greatness and his glory. Sadaqallahu Azim and Allah speaks the truth. Allah gives what is most truthful and most trustworthy for guidance for humanity. We see this statement or this truth repeated in the Quran to emphasize the fact that Allah does not beget, nor are we to associate anything in our worship or acknowledgement of God as the sole creator of the heavens and earth. And as these are repeated throughout the Quran, they are out there and repeated and emphasized for a very special purpose obviously for the aims and the purpose of revelation itself. And we should be reflect often as we grow and hopefully learn and study as we are instructed. We've given a book. We've given a book that was given to us for a specific purpose. It's a book, uh, a book of guidance. It's a book that we are to see and upon faith that is revealed by Allah. And what Allah reveals is for our best benefit. It is for the guidance as we state in every salah, in every prayer. Our prayer is to ask God to guide us. So guidance is the most valuable property for the believer. So Allah states that he has no partner. He has no son. And if this is repeated and this is preserved of the most preserved in the Quran, as Allah has himself said that he preserves it. This is a truth and reality that we must see in thinking about how hum Allah is producing a leadership for humanity that will be of the gravest importance. Regardless of how it's treated in any local or any contemporary attitude or treatment, that divinely, in terms of a divine statement, it's going to have the greatest gravity in the whole picture, the whole context of Quranic guidance. The second reference, Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa idha jaa nasu lahi wa fat, wa ra'ayta nasa yadakhuluna fi dini Allah afwaja, fa sahbih bi hamdi rabika wa staghfiru, ina hu kana tawaba. When comes the help, Nasrullah, the help of Allah, and the victory, both are the greatest necessity, if they are the necessity for us as believers, or as those who are seeking God's guidance, then these are also to be of the greatest value, and we are to view them as a necessity for our Islamic life, for our religious life, for our religious thinking most importantly. 
that we are to be see ourselves as reliant upon the help of Allah, and that He promises His help as well as the victory. And it is regardful as a student, and every Muslim is a student. We're submitting to God's will, and to submit best to submit to God's will, we okay. must. Can you want me to call what Allah's will is? Message. And we must know what God's will is not. Yeah, I could have been speaking to the girl and tell her to email me what she said or not. So Allah says, and what are they to yet the Kuluna? At the top, Fifi. And that you will see, you can see the reader, that we're going to see people entering Allah's religion. That's why I just. Or maybe your influence from your religious influence or your traditional religious influence or from your knowledge or from your teachers or your leaders in religion, you may interpret this in one particular way or in many different throughout the Muslim community of how this is to be understood. I'm choosing to grasp the gravity of this statement, of this verse, in today's reality. And that what we're seeing televised day and night are huge numbers. Now, whether I will go so far as that they're entering God's religion, that depends on how we define the Dean of God. But one thing for sure that we cannot debate is that Allah says you're going to see it. And at that moment, that will be a victory. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I've witnessed enough and there's no, there's no accident and really is no incident that this is all occurring by the will and the plan of Allah. So Allah says, when that occurs, celebrate the praises of your Lord and pray for his forgiveness, for he is often returning in grace and mercy. Not to just us as individuals, but to us as a group, to us as a species, to us as humanity. And Allah says to us, Alhamdulillah, alladhi, خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون. This third reference, I believe, even helps us to have even greater detail for our interests. It should be to see God's will, to see God's plan. By seeing God's plan, spiritually and mentally, then we can conduct our lives in accordance with that plan. So it's of paramount importance that we as creatures, that God has created us with the ability to see and understand with our faculties that God has given to us, those gifts that God has given us, that he's given them to us to see his plan and to submit to his plan. This is the fulfillment of what we say when we say, I am a Muslim, I am a Muslim. It is really a prayer that we have that identify with what constitutes the best for my life as God has created it. And my Lord has ordered me to submit to his will. But I would need help. I would need guidance. I would need an understanding of just how this submission occurs. And what is responsible, what my responsibility is for coming and bringing myself with the freedom that I've been given. And it's this freedom that we're given that enhances this concept of Islam of submission, or this, this, this character, the quality we refer to as Muslim. So Allah informs us that he is the one who has made, created the heavens and the earth, khalaqa, and then the shift in the verses from the created action to the making of an action. That obviously we can see this, this habit of this making of darkness light is coming based upon this 
foundation of creation. And it will be this, now we have a contrast that is going to demand something on us. When we fasted the previous month, the month of Ramadan, we may have noticed, I'm sure many of us paid attention that Allah says, this month is the month, the month of Ramadan, was the month that Allah caused to descend the Quran, the revelation for all mankind, the conclusion of revelation, right? But it also says what? Allah said, highly exalted is he, that is also what came down with the Quran and the Furqan. All Muslims, when we come into when we come into Islam, we come into we come into an Islamic environment, we come into a community environment, but we also come into a knowledge environment. And whether you have ever or never been in an Arabic class, I could show you in a brief conversation how many Arabic terms you have already been influenced by. So when we're talking about the Quran, we're not talking about we need to divide our community of those that know Arabic and those. No, it's one in one learning environment. And all of us, from the first time we heard someone say, Assalamu alaikum, we begin to be influenced by terminology from outside our previous orientation. So it's from time to time that we want to enhance that as it helps us to understand what it is we need to understand in more detail about the guidance of Allah. Now, Upon those references, we can do some reflection. Reflection, as Allah says, akbar, reflecting on Allah is of the greatest utility. Dhikr. We know it takes different forms, just as a form of remembrance, just as a form of influence the mind and the thinking. But Allah says that the members of Allah, that that is of the greatest utility, of the greatest benefit. So we're looking for benefits, and as we look at the human being as Allah has created, we can see, it's no mystery, it's no secret as to what your and my benefit needs are. And this darkness and light also helps to serve our needs. If the human being, and this is where the Furqan, and this contrast of truth and falsehood, come into play. These are only symbolic terms, aren't they? We use them ourselves. If we're in a discussion with somebody, we're trying to see the light of their statement. We're seeing, trying to see the light of their influences, of their reasoning, right? We're trying to see, we're trying to discern from what the light of understanding is from the darkness or the confusion of understanding. So no, yes, Allah is definitely choosing a language that his creatures will recognize and will serve the purpose. Now Allah says that this is, we said, and it has been introduced to us at the time we live in. Now we want to come full contemporary. The time that you and I exist in is the time that God's guidance will reach us. Is the moment, is the context, is the place, are the factors. These are the conditions that we're going to meet God in his word. God is going to speak to us through these circumstances. And he can read, and he knows that these are the something that he has allowed that will reach us best. So when we see the crowds and channel two or channel five or channel seven or the internet or YouTube or whatever medium of communication, it will give you its spin. As Muslims, brothers and sisters, we're supposed to already have our lens for whatever occurs in our human experience. Otherwise, the Quran is incomplete. So we are brought into a conversation. We are invited, Allah wants us to come because Allah wants us to use the abilities for discernment and he has given us a Furqan to serve that purpose. If we never consider what that Furqan, if we never apply that Furqan, will be left to channel five, channel seven, or whatever medium, the internet, for them to tell you your relation, to identify your experience. It's not that we're opposed to any medium, it's just that as a Muslim, I have a source. I have a Furqan 
given to me, provided for me upon my faith. This is a very special day. And I know we will say that every Friday. We may say that every day, thank Allah, for every day. But we're given Friday, Jumma day is kind of uh, set out a little bit by emphasis from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, isn't it? As you know, as you've studied religion over the years, or even if you're new to Islam, and we hope and pray, don't we? We pray a lot that there are some brand new Muslims because we want Islam to spread. We want the message of Islam to be propagated. We want it to be received and appreciated. So the Prophet prayers and peace be upon him has said that this is a very special day. But for me, for this day, and in these circumstances, in the middle of this pandemic, as well as in the middle of this global movement, there are signs here for us to acknowledge. And the one that comes registered in me and is pressing on me very firmly is the reflection on the Kaaba and the Hajj. And having completed the uh, Ramadan, the fact of Ramadan, the fourth pillar, the next pillar that we arrive at is pilgrimage to the sacred house, pilgrimage to the house, to the Kaaba. And that is asked of us to perform at least once in a lifetime. And that one visit is enough to represent its meaning in our life throughout the whole of life. I was favored by Allah to perform the Hajj. And in that performance of the Hajj with others who are someone in the congregation now, we performed, we were blessed to perform Hajj. But what was unique about that Hajj is this. Not just for us personally, but the law favored us to be able to perform that Hajj at a particular time, that occurs from time to time, which is known as Hajj al-Akbar, the Great Hajj. Now I'm referring to this, I'm referencing this because of what is going on in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this global movement that is said to express to seek humanity with full respect for the human person. It's recalled identified as Hajj al-Akbar because the day of Arafat and Juma coincide. And for those two great symbols in our religion, to come together and coincide in the same day, this is a celebration of one of the greatest principles in this religion. One of the greatest aims for the revelation, for the sending of prophets, for the preaching of God's words, for the angels, for the creation of Adam. All this comes into a symbolic gesture and statement where humanity is to be brought together to know itself in what God has established as the foundation for any ideology related to the human life and his guidance for that life. And that should be easy for us to kind of see because we turn to that direction. Every prayer of the believer, every prayer of every Muslim in every locale, we're directing our attention and that is serves the purpose, the best direction for our salah. So then that principle has to be carried with us all the time, or it should be included in our efforts to serve Allah. For the Muslim community to fulfill its obligation as a believing community who received, not only did we receive the revelation, the conclusion of revelation, but brothers and sisters, there's something else that the Muslim community was given that if they neglect it, they have dropped their responsibility. We read it as we read through the Quran, we read about this very important contract. It's the covenant of God. These as Muslims, and we are empowered by Quran, by direct, by God's appointment to us to our responsibility among humanity as a model. These are the factors, these are the tools, 
This is the Furqan that we have to have. Otherwise, we will not bring a solution to humanity's problem. We would have dropped the ball because we did not know how to apply the solution that Allah had revealed it. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? He said, Allah has given to me a very weighty message, thakhila, a very heavy, we know how we use that word, don't we? When somebody tells us something, right? That requires some, some thought or some, uh, some reasoning that we're not used to using. We say, that's heavy. The Quran is a heavy message, but we don't know the gravity of the message until we accept the responsibility to apply the message. When we are required, when the burden is on us, as it was on Prophet Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him, the burden that he carried, that he had to convince idolaters, idol worshipers, that what they had devoted, what they're devoting their life, what they're building their, their culture upon, what they're building all their social uh, uh, guidance on, what they're appreciate, what they're celebrating their forefathers with and by, that is all false. That was the burden on him. And to a large degree, we must see that this is still yet a burden on us, though the outward appearance of the idols has been reformed, has been recalculated or restructured to be more sinister. And this is the darkness and the light. Allah allows both the darkness, the darkness that clouds human vision as to what he really is, to what his basic constitution is. Our basic constitution is, as Allah has revealed in the Quran, is that he has created us from mud, molded, molded into a shape. And then he has breathed of his ruh into that mud, and it becomes a living, it becomes a functional, a productive, but most importantly, it becomes a conscious thing. So as I conclude this first part of the khutbah, I pray Allah that we see that the Quran, the revelation, our religion, it assigns us a responsibility as well as empowering us with that reference, this very important reference, which I refer to as the Qibla of the Muslim Salat. That is our reference point for our prayer. And brothers and sisters, it is, I'm convinced beyond any doubt, it is the reference point for us addressing a global movement that we see manifesting itself for providing for the perception of why this is necessary. Why has Allah ordered this? But we think it came through our circumstances. We think that when we, the Prophet you know, Allah says to the, when these existential moments, existential moments or perception that we are to have in a very personal way, Allah is in the, says in the ground, right? Revealed to the Prophet that when they were engaged in military combat, right? Allah says, it wasn't you that threw that hand of sand while you were fighting, he said, it was Allah. When we can get to the point, they tried to frighten the believers away from having this kind of relationship with Allah. Well, Allah can be with me in my battle, all right? Yet I'm throwing the punches and Allah is throwing the punches too. Allah is saying that he is the one that will defend us. He is the one that can best secure our humanity. He can provide the protection for your faith, but also that he can advance this belief. He can advance what Allah has revealed to his prophets and messengers and that we are inheritors. We are to inherit the faith that Allah has revealed to his prophets. We are entrusted, aren't we? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, go and tell those who are not present that they may be more mindful than you. So is this really this mission that we must acknowledge that we're responsible for, but, main, but most importantly, we have to study and invest ourselves in God's in the Quran and revelation, because only there is the light. Only within God's word is the light. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad 
كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على محمد النبي وعلى آله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. To conclude the khutbah for this salat juma. As I said, as I stated, I feel this this particular juma is very important, of significant. As we speak about the signs of Allah, and Allah tells us what those signs are, I'm sure many of us, but if you have not paid attention, you should have, I'm sure many have, paid attention to what Allah says, his signs, where they are, where they are. If there's the signs that guide us that Allah says he's given to us for guidance, then we have to, we have this burden of the responsibility upon us or the obligation. Because actually the signs are given to us to take the burden off. It is man's guesswork that causes the burden. And as well as Satan's lies that creates the burden on the human being. So Allah said that you are mercy as the community. We are given to, are raised up as a mercy to humanity. It's our obligation to take the burden off, the burden of falsehood the burden of confusion that Satan himself has composed as we and that we must struggle regardless of what efforts we require that because we will be that force, we are to be that force because we have God's word in our hand. We have, we have accepted the covenant to be in this relationship, to be, take this responsibility as what God wants us to take this responsibility. So Allah tells us that of the, his signs are in the heaven, his signs are in the earth. And where do we learn that from? We learn that they are called ayah. Where do we learn them? From the ayah of the Quran. I'm sure we most, if not, you, we should make this correlation between the ayah or verses of the Quran and the ayah that we see in the heavens and the earth and also in our relationship in our affairs, in human activity, in a global movement, there are signs from Allah. Now we must now the task, the difficult task of reading those signs. Allah has given us the book to make that easy for us, to accommodate our reading of the signs, the verses or ayah of the Quran enable us to read the ayah in the heavens and the earth and in our own experiences, our own life phenomena. So on Hajj, and I'll try to be brief, the black stone is the point, and we know the history with the black stone and its significance as coming from revealed to identify for Abraham salam, and his son where to construct the house for God's worship. And I'm sure it's very, most of us understand that it is this significance, the significance of this sacred house. It's sacred because it represents God's guidance, the revelation of God, but specifically God's guidance to humanity, how you construct, how you are to construct your society. This is so sacred that it is a law identified, established a lot, that it is a marker for our prayer as well as our circumambulation on the pilgrimage of the, the uh, ritual of pilgrimage, of Hajj. Is it just a physical walking around or just for exercise or is there meaning there for all time? Is there significance there for humanity? When we see this, we should see. When we see a global movement, 
we see humanity walking, walking, walking. When we go to the hodge, walk, 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 circumambulate. Identify your life movement with significance of that house and begin it starts with the black stone. Muslims are the our understanding because of the blessings of revelation is that we're giving not the solution to racism, we're giving the criteria upon which Satan robbed the revelation to create racism. And if you think that now the one that created, invented, because you can't create it, it's a lie, invented racism will give you the answer to racism, you're going to be disappointed. If you are a thinking believer in God and you see and hear God speaking to you through the Kaaba, through the, uh, uh, the black stone, and it is rightly black, not because it's related to any race, but it's related to excellence. And it's not the excellence of a black man, it's the, it's the excellence of the man that Allah created and then evolved with his word. So Abu uh, Omar, radiallahu an, may Allah be pleased with him, one of the foremost companions of the Prophet. He said, if I had not seen Prophet Muhammad kiss that black stone, he said, I would have never kissed it. That statement is an indication that the idolatry that had become customary had influenced the thinking, the behavior, the perception by the Arab had been blotted, had been blotted out. He said, I would never have kissed it because the idol, idolatry was the influence on his people pre pre previously. And now that he sees a prophet, he said, then it has a prophetic meaning. And therefore it deserves the respect, the kiss of respect. Imam Muhammad said to us, it's a beautiful symbol of the baby. That when the baby is created, is born free of prejudice, free of bias, free of selfishness. And that is the model, and that is the, what we reverence, that is what we protect, that is what is of the highest principle for us as we go forward in our life as being guided by God, that that is our principle for understanding the true essence of humanity, the true value of humanity. It's not based on your concept of justice. It's based on our laws created as believers. This is our distinction. And I'm not trying to convert anyone to my thinking. But if I had a conversation with a Christian, I would, be, I would love to share this view of our religious view of humanity. This is our religion. This is the foundation for our religious view. And I want you to think about it. I wouldn't impose, right? We don't impose. But I trust that if you can get it explained to you clearly, you will see the value in it. You will see the benefit. You will see God's word speaking to it. So if this black stone is something that we revere, but for us it represents the excellence. Eswad speaks to our dignity, inherent dignity. We say, oh, Allah, oh, the home of Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma Sayyidina Muhammad. Oh Allah, bless by wa barak ala Sayyidina. Blessings on Sayyidina Muhammad, the most honorable Muhammad, the most dignified of human character, Sayyidina. So it doesn't mean black for us. When we hear black, we say, yes, yeah, Sayyid. We're speaking of our respect for that person. So this is the criteria of the Furqan that until that Furqan is reestablished, the human being will never get the blessings that Allah says he has placed in the house, in the Kaaba. Allah says that the Kaaba is a house full of blessings for humanity. So this day is a very special day. Now as I conclude. And up to this point, maybe it sounds like my opinion or my perspective. 
but yet we respect the fact that I am using Quranic references. Here's one that we can conclude with. Our prayers, if you all would allow me this, just this brief, because I think it's significant, is not opinionated. It's an, observa it's an observant, observation of our ritual practice. When we pray during the day, is it audible or is it silent? It's silent. The Lord prayer, the Asa prayer, right? Silent. No one is to hear the revelation. You're saying to yourself, when the sun is set and it's dark, we are to say it audibly so that we can hear. The word of God is said audibly so we can hear. Juma is the exception. Why? I've used up too much time, so I can't give you time to think about it. But if you think about it, you may arrive at the same conclusion I arrive at. And I'm still talking about the factors of global movements, the awakening of the human conscience, the preparation for human beings to come into God's religion, right? Juma, we said the message is proclaimed because a human during the day of human activity, it is where we're going. It is the purpose for revelation is to take us to this artifact, this exchange, this cultural exchange with each other, this integrated world, if you want, this global family again. If we're created from one soul, then the ultimate objection or return has to be to one soul because that's the essential nature expressed in the multitudes. So Allah says this is the conclusion will be that you're going to see humanity entering into Allah's religion. You will see your entry returning to that pattern, that original pattern upon which uh, accommodate, which, which really is accountable responsible for your growth and in the world. The social servant, the social reality is why we're able to speak, why we're able to have references, why we're able to extend our family, why we have to have material access, better access to material resources, all because of this social reality that Allah created when he created Adam. So Juma day is an exception. It's light, but we're Acknowledging the words of God, which is the prayer, which is the Quran. And it is Juma. And I say today is a special day. You see how special today is? Juma day. It is the day of gathering. So for this Juma day, this symbol of gathering, the reality is people are being gathered now. And they think they're being gathered just because of George Floyd. Now, just like that, the prophet said, when you threw that hand, when they were valid, they, were, they didn't have many. They didn't have many weapons. So they had to fight with sticks, whatever they had. They had a sword, good if they had a rock, that's what they fight. That's how poor the Muslim community was in its infancy. So it says that when you threw that sand in hand-to-hand -hand combat, that was a law. So don't let us think that these circumstances, oh, this is just an effect, this is just a side effect of America's so greatness, but she overlooked her uh, basis for her democracy. All of that is going to submit to God's will. Whatever label, whatever outer service, exterior form, it's going to serve Allah's will. So I think it's very important that when we say this is Juma day, that we know that Allah says he is the one gathering. Not just in the mosque, but in his masjid, his earthly masjid, he's gathering. My advice is don't interfere because you will fail. Accept that it is to seek God's will and it will help. It will enable us to see more of what God is revealing, see more of the signs of Allah as they are unfold. So this is the day 
when we see humanity being resurrected. Another day, Yaomu Kiyama. Not only are the humanity standing up, but it's also Kiyam. Elevating, reaching up to higher and higher pillars of, of truth. Now was enough has happened to shake humanity, to shake the consciousness for all human beings. France, London, Canada, Italy, throughout the world, the shaking of consciousness to ask and question again, what are true human values? What are they? Let us truly now again define what is truly a human human values. And Allah says he tests us with these things. He is testing us with life and he tests us with death. Allah can speak through this terrible event and we should be clear-minded enough and faithful enough to know that Allah is in charge of all things and that what occurs, occurs by his will. The word George, it means a chiller of soil. Allah says that there would be Surah Al-Qariya, the overwhelming event, speaking to a, an event that would occur that which it will occupy your attention, it will occupy your senses, and to turn away, you may need a distraction just to break from it, that is like magnetism because it's you. Human, when Allah created Adam, he created one to till the soil, to engage, invest his life, and to realize his life as one who is re reproducing his life through the medium of the creation over which he has been given vice charity. So Allah says that he has created Adam from mud, from clay, molded into shape. And that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, when he was asked about, as I conclude, the people he was sent to, yes, today, were ignorant of themselves as human persons, as to what this value, how we are to measure this value. The educational system obviously has failed. The religious community failed. The intellectual community the uh, economic community, the material, the commercial, have all failed to arrive at this day and the message in this day that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to the prophets before. All of them have failed, but Allah's will and plan unfolds as to bring and to revert and to bring us back to the original truth, the original the universal message. So the prophet, when they were asking him about they were asking him about class status. What determines status of class and class, racial, economic, or whatever along those lines? He said, we are all Adam. So I take comfort in seeing our brother and our fellow human being whom Allah willed to express his truth. that humanity is to be seen to have freedom, to be a tiller of the soil. And Allah is the he that creates both life and he creates death. سبحان ربك الرب يزدي عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Glory be your Lord, the Lord of majesty above, above whatever they attribute to you and peace be upon those who are sent to warn and praise be to Allah, the cherisher, sustainer of all the systems of knowledge and me, the salah.